Good evening, I'm Dan Wall. And I'm Laura Lee. Thanks for joining us. In the past year, there have been a number of assaults on staff inside the Minnesota Sex Offender Program. Now, the desperation of some of the clients in Moose Lake reaching a boiling point. Some even say they are so desperate to get out, they're willing to commit murder. To understand the complex program, it's important to understand how these offenders, or clients, as they're called, get in. Tonight, we kick off our three-part series. I go inside that high-security facility and talk to clients who say they see no light at the end of the tunnel because they feel like they're given life sentences for crimes they've already served. We're learning more about the man accused of brutally attacking a staff member inside Moose Lake's Minnesota Sex Offender Program facility. A brutal attack inside the Minnesota Sex Offender Program in Moose Lake. Nicholas Aaron Jones was arrested last night. That May 1st attack was carried out by Nicholas Aaron Jones, a client inside MSOP. Carlton County Court documents say while a staff member was completing rounds, Aaron Jones struck him in the head with a fan motor hidden inside a pillowcase. He then repeatedly hit and kicked the 53-year-old security counselor eight more times in the head. The staff member was hospitalized with serious injuries. That employee suffered serious head trauma and was airlifted to the hospital. Aaron Jones pleaded guilty to attempted murder, and in July, a judge sentenced him to 18 years in prison. I can't take it. I can't be here. Our cameras were the only ones in the courtroom when he made chilling statements, admitting to the judge he intended to kill the employee that day, and he said he would do it again if given the chance. Yes, I was meant to kill somebody that day. I apologize that it had to happen to you, but at the end of the day, it'll happen again. Aaron Jones claims he was mistreated inside the Minnesota Sex Offender Program, and he says murder was his ticket out. People should look into why are people trying to escape a treatment center to go to prison? That should be alarming. Dan Wilson is a current client inside the state's sex offender program. He says what happened with Aaron Jones has happened before and will happen again. The less hope we have, the more the court system doesn't want to pay attention or the more uh, the public doesn't want to pay attention to the real issues, the, the less hope we're going to have and that's a recipe for disaster. That hopelessness boiling over into violence. We are learning of yet another assault at the Minnesota Sex Offender Program in Moose Lake. Just a week after the Aaron Jones attack, MSOP clients attacked four other staff members. And Wilson says tensions inside the facility continue to grow. There's a pattern of clients going to extreme lengths to get out of here and go to prison. Not to go home necessarily. They've given up on that because it's not going to happen but to go to prison and just be left alone and not abused over and over again. In 2019, another ruthless attack. MSOP client George Mack Jr. used a razor blade to slash the throat of a clinician. He was sentenced to 20 years for attempted murder and assault. In a letter written to us from the Stillwater prison, Mack writes, I'm not going to sit there and do life for something I might do. If I'm going to do life, it's going to be because I did something. He goes on to write, I'd rather die in prison respected and feared than die there as a sexual monster that I know I'm not. The recent unrest and violence inside MSOP has catapulted another look at the controversial program. Clients want the public to take a hard look at MSOP and challenge its effectiveness. We're not asking for a break. We're asking for people to pay attention to what's happening. Judge Donovan Frank is tasked with ruling whether MSOP is unconstitutional in the past decade, the prison-like treatment center has been under fire after a class action lawsuit was filed by nearly 800 clients inside. They argue the program violates their constitutional rights by handing them pseudo-life sentences after they've already completed their prison terms. And because of its historically low release rate, in 2015, a federal judge agreed and ruled the program unconstitutional. However, Executive Director Nancy Johnston with MSOP says the pathway to release lies on the shoulders of those in the program. Human change is really up to the individual client. We can't force change. We can give clients the tools to learn about themselves and to hopefully um, reduce risk to harm. Um, but what they do with those skills and um, how they apply them and the work that they do and they're willing to do in treatment is really ultimately up to, to the person. Minnesota is one of 20 states in the country with civil commitment. 
In a 2013 MSOP task force report, Minnesota has the highest number per capita of civilly committed sex offenders of any state. According to the Department of Human Services, in its 30 years of operation in Moose Lake, only 21 clients have been fully discharged from the program. Neighboring Wisconsin and Iowa both have civil commitment programs. Both have less than half of the clients compared to Minnesota, yet higher release rates. Wisconsin currently has 191 men civilly committed. About 167 have been released in its lifetime. In Iowa, about 148 men are in its program. 69 patients have successfully left. More than 50% release rates for each state, respectively, compared to Minnesota's release rate of just 3%. Johnston argues Minnesota courts are granting at least 12 to 15 petitions a year. It is a sophisticated program. It is hard work. It's not something that um, they're going to change maybe really ingrained behaviors overnight. For many clients, um, it has taken years. What is your solution besides abolishing this program? What is your solution to strike that balance of allowing you to have your rights, but also making sure the public feels safe? that you guys can be rehabilitated? That's a difficult question to answer, and it's a, it's a good question, and it's a real concern. I think um, perhaps evaluations from psychiatrists, you know, there's supposed to be psychiatric treatment here, and there's no psychiatrist. Maybe they have the ability to determine who's dangerous and who's not. According to the Department of Human Services, clinical treatment is provided to all clients. In fact, participation in treatment is the only way clients can move through the program. However, some clients claim they're not getting adequate treatment, and even if they participate, they are not allowed to move through the program. They claim dying is the only way some graduate the treatment program. Coming up tomorrow night at 10 o'clock in part two of our investigation series, we talk to a former MSOP therapist who claims she was ordered to reduce assessment scores so clients do not move through the phases of treatment. It is a story you'll only see on Northern News Now.